Good evening, QuakeCon 2023. What is up? Welcome to the Quake World Championship Grand Final between Rafa and Razy. I'm DJ Re joined by ZSX and 40 Lions. And gentlemen, the storylines have been plenty this entire weekend, but these two actually uh, have their own story to tell. Rafa looking to clench yet another championship, potentially his fifth in the in the Quake World Championship. And then Razy looking to actually avoid second and take a championship of his own. Gentlemen, good evening, what is up? Good evening, yeah, pleasure to be here. And you're right, I think I've seen this story before, but not quite in this way. Definitely some new narratives coming through and, you know, Razy pushed to the limit. You know, when he's gone through his lower bracket challenges before, it doesn't feel that he's gone the distance as he had to in the previous encounters. So this is a really enticing one. I want to see how he's reset and how Raph is going to come out as well. Yeah, Rafa's been kind of lying in wait looking at his prey right now. Mm. A very close series that we just had, and Razy's able to get this redemption attempt. But really, I mean, he's been through a lot already, and he's got this big hurdle to overcome. But yes, we're here. Grand finals. We finally made it. There he is, hometown here. Oh, Rafa on stage in a very familiar place for him, oftentimes in the finals, many times as the champion looking to put that belt around his waist one more time. And mm. I heard there's a couple of Rafa fans out there in the audience. No. Just a, yeah, just some whispers, right? That's like three people, Yeah, maybe. All four people really want yeah. Rafa to win. Like, yeah. Hey, Rafa. But I think one thing to say about Rafa is although, it, you know, Kilson uh, t took the belt last year, that Rafa's looked as good as we've seen him in championship form. I think the analogy I would use is that, you know, his play style, him as a person, he's a predator, right? And that predator has now been starved for two years right, right. of his victory, of his belt. And despite all of his challenges along the way, he is looking as good as he's ever looked, as sharp as he's ever looked. And that's worrying for Razy. And I was speaking to someone backstage yesterday, and I asked them who's going to win. And they said, as long as you don't let Rafa get, get to the final, it could be anyone. So, you know, he's here now, and it's his championship to lose, if anything. And here's his opponent from Maestro Gaming. It's Razy, who has looked very good all weekend long as well. Yes, he did get dropped down to the lower bracket by Rafa in a 3-0 loss, but he has an opportunity for some revenge. 40, Razy's looked pretty good all weekend, but he comes in as a little bit different Razy in the QuakeCon 2023. A little bit, but my worry is that this there's this just mental block facing Rafa. You know, Razy's just constantly running against Rafa here and there, and it always seems to drop. And also the picks, I can't get help but feel like these picks that we saw last time really lent themselves to Rafa's favor. And I hope whenever we get to the pick bands, we see a stronger pick phase from Razy, given the fact that, yes, he came from the lower bracket, so it is difficult, but he needs to make the best of it. Well, I mean, at this point in time, if you know you're going to make it to the finals, you also know you're going to have to have a deep championship pool. You're going to have to have a uh, familiarity with all the maps and be comfortable on them, especially because here in the Grand Finals, because Rafa made it all the way through, undefeated in his matches, he already has a one map advantage. So we start this one and Razy's, or excuse me, and Rafa's up one game to zero. Yeah, that kind of sucks, right? Now, what is that format? <laughs> <laughs> but it's deserved. After all he's gone yes, through, it's deserved, yes. right? On the flip side, Razy's had to work his way through. He had to get to that point to to keep knocking out the best of the best, that he's also deserved it. And he understands the challenges. He's been in this final, in this position seven times. He knows what it's all about. He, he doesn't need that map, right? He's got to come into this with his clean slate, and he knows how many maps he has to win. He has to win four, and that's all that matters. Right, and actually only three because he gets right the one for just being there in the winter. Oh, you know, I was about Razy. Yes, Razy's got to win Keep four. Up, my oh friend. my god, we need to get yeah, I'm just so vitamins ready vitamins for like this <laughs> week and be over and not have to deal with you anyway. No, I'm really excited <laughs> to be here. Thanks to all the casters who've been bringing their voices to the games this weekend. And a big shout out because we had some incredible play all weekend. So before we do go into picks and bands, if you would just give a solid, hearty cheer for all of the players players that competed for 18 weeks, that came and did things that we would even believe could happen. Seneku taking out Kilsen, strong Sage with his 
freshman showing here in such a credible way. I mean, it's been phenomenal. It's been great. It's been unreal to be back here. Quake Tom, Dallas. What a crowd, what an atmosphere, what an event, and it all comes down to this. Yeah. Feels really good to be able to do this. Oh, but yes, the matches <laughs> and the quake have been fantastic too, and the crowd has been absolutely wonderful. One more set to go, and it's going to be fantastic. Well, I think uh, without further ado, let's take a look at the picks and the bands. A lot going into this, and this could uh, say a lot. So Deep Embrace is the game that technically will already be going to Rafa, which means that we've got Fail, we've got Keep, Ruins after that, Awoken, Blood Covenant, mm. and Molten Falls should it go to the seventh and final map. Dan, you want to take us through these champion picks? I just want to take you through the theme I see. I said in the previous series these two met that I generally enjoy the way Rafa wants to approach this because he likes to pick the combat heavier champions to you know, manage Razi's aggression. That's gone out the window and they flipped it on the head here. We obviously start with a clutch on Veil vale, and he just wants to pick that out as soon as he can pick it. So he bans out the keel, sorry, Forty. Yeah, takes I, out I feel the clutch. Slighted. That's okay. And it's a difficult map for clutch. It's very combat heavy and it can be utilized exceptional. But if you do get on that back foot, Rafa will put that pressure on with the range, with the orb, with the aggression. So this is going to be super interesting. It could be the case that Razi ends up turtling down in that lower green room and just waiting and biding his time. We'll have to see. This one's going to be wild. We move on through and then we come on to Corrupted Keep. The Anarchy pick from Rafa, we didn't really like it when we saw it come up from Razi. It's not the same situation, Forty, but it's, again, a high-risk pick that we haven't seen pain pay off time and time again. Yep. Yep, yep, and then we get into Bruins. It's going to be Nyx versus Scale Bear getting thick on that one on Razy's Ooh. side. I know, we, you love it, you love it. Awoken, yeah. BJ versus Visor, Blood Covenant, Doom versus Galena, and then the Aizen mm -hmm. versus Death Knight on Molten Falls, and we saw a little bit of that earlier, just saying. I, I like this better from Razy than we saw it last time, right? The, the role reversal on Ruins is interesting, but it is a challenge because the Knicks can play around the scale on that map in particular. So Razy, like Rafa on, on Molten earlier today, has to play calculated and careful because he can be picked apart if not. Yes, the stack is huge, but at the end of the day, it's quite broad open map. So he has to slow it down a little bit. Not, he can't just go full throttle. Yeah, I think uh, one of the really interesting things is Razy having that clutch in the first map. I yeah. think that could be huge. Now, clutch is a champion that is not played as much in the QPL, but Razy was the player that tried to convince people this is a viable pick, right? To the point where some players were just banning it outright against him. So an interesting scenario, not saying it is a free win on any level, because I think that would have been a stronger pick on a smaller map, but on Veil, there's ways and tools for Rafa to be able to deal with that. But if Razy somehow takes that first map and a comfort pick mm -hmm. like, uh, like Clutch, I think that's really good for Razy in this situation, right? Because my biggest fear is that Rafa comes, he sits in that chair as a champion, and he just takes three games and shuts it out, forcing Razy into second place, place he's comfortable with. He'd like to get that championship, but I think that game one will be huge for momentum. Yeah, it will be. And I, I love the fact he's gone in the clutch. It's a high risk, high reward play. Veil yeah. is a hard map to play it on, but it also does play into the strengths of clutch as well. Through those corridors, you can pop that shield. You're not getting out of the way of that clutch. That's going to be. It's going to be combat heavy, and it's going to be a brawl, but it gives Razy that stability, that layer of confidence. And I think this one's going to go the distance, Sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm putting that down, down. All right. All right. Lock it in. Lock it in. Yeah, essentially, if he takes map number one, it's a reset, right? Then it's just exactly. the best of five, even Steven. But yeah, map number one is going to be very, very important, Vale. I mean, admittedly, Rafa's favorite map, as he said before. <laughs> Probably not favorite to go against Clutch, but yeah. he's got to be ready for the task. Yep. Well, we're going to get started here in just a moment. The players are getting ready. The server is launching, and the grand finals here of the Quake World Championship at QuakeCon 2023 is about to begin. <laughs> That's what I'm nice. talking about. Makes what is noise. Lethal doing down there? Shouldn't he be doing his job anyways? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> He's loving the games just as much. So. That's true. All right. Who am I cast with her? Oh. It's me. Bye, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Sorry. Enjoy Sorry, the game. Sorry, you're stuck with me. Sorry. All right, 40. I'm really excited. It has been a 
amazing, amazing play all weekend long. It all comes down to this. Two familiar play faces, one who has been a champion four times. Razy has taken several second places, but now getting the opportunity to possibly clench the belt and the championship. This is it. Big start here for Rob. A lot of LG damage into the machine gun here as he doesn't have rail yet, but he wants to keep that damage up from a distance. He's going to go through the Thunderdome and grab some rockets, thinking his way through the telly. And this could be, ooh, if he was a little bit faster, maybe a shotgun blast. And there it is. And that's going to be one of the things, uh, at least, that Razy is going to be looking to do is try to use Elias, the movement of clutch in the best way that he possibly can, make it a little bit harder for Rafa to be hitting some of those shots. But gosh, Rafa, it cannot be understated. He has really been playing phenomenally this weekend. In the last time that they met, which was this morning, Rafa won three to zero. And Razy has to just put that game and series out of his mind and try to make something happen here. Inside the room, this is a great spot for him to be. And Razy's gonna get the first frag. He is hurt. It was not clean by any means, 40, but he put one on the board. Yeah. Did what he needed to do, and now it's a little rough. He's just hanging on. He's going to grab a light armor. He really wants this mega. Rafa wants to rush, and he's just mistimed it. Couldn't get there in time. Luckily for Razy, he's going to be able to stack back up and kind of stabilize after that first fight. Still so early in this game, and both players are probably going to be playing at a pace in which they're kind of feeling one another out. You know, Razy playing from somewhat of a disadvantaged position with Rafa already up one game because he made it through that upper bracket. Razy also has uh, had to take out one of his own teammates in order to get here in, in what was a grueling matchup versus Wenger. And now trying to finally grab that championship belt. So very quiet for the last 50 seconds. That shield is up for Razy and that is going to be key for him to try to win these battles. Now we saw also the situation. Rafa got stuck in that room, tried to use the orb to escape, actually up the jump pad. Shield is popped. This works out pretty good for Rafa because that shield doesn't do much in that engagement. Yeah, unfortunately for Razzy, he just couldn't get up the jump pad to aggress after the shield was popped. You're absolutely right. That first frag got him in a corner. The die was used, and here comes the push. <sighs> LG around the corner, 80 HP. Razzy on the run. The rail will miss just barely. Razzy's going to grab a light, and he's going to jump through that window through that telly. That was a good escape by Razy. He did not want to turn and fight, especially because that shield was not up, but it is now. Orb is down, shield is up. This is a window of opportunity for Razy, but you just can't force it in a championship match like this. So you gotta take it. Big rock and bounce, second one, and there is frag number two. The shield is popped. It's a bit of assurance, 40, but uh, he gets the job done. He's all about it. It doesn't matter. Two frag lead here, and he's actually going to contest it. This is a little crazy, given he doesn't have the shield to rail up close, but the shotgun switch is going to net him his third frag. Crazy is looking very good here, We A very solid beginning and start for him, as you mentioned, right? If he wins this first game and can somehow kind of wow. equalize it with another nicely placed rail. Shield's going to be up in about 16 seconds. Orb is there, but you know what? If there's one thing you know about Rafa, it is that you don't count him out. We've seen him claw back from six, seven, even nine frag deficits and come back to win games. But Razy so far is doing what he needs to do to potentially be the winner of this first game. Catches his opponent coming through. Nice wow. rail does come out from Rafa, but Razy with the rocket to put up frag number five. Incredible rail off the spawn as well. Rafa with a rail of his own. As Razy will stack back up again, the light armor in the window room, the rocket, he jumps over it, Rafa wants more damage, there's another rail in the oh. orb to get the frag! What a play from Rafa there! And that's exactly what he wants to do in this particular case, right? Orb, yes, it can be used for mobility, but it can also be used to delete your opponent just like Rafa did there. We've got six minutes left on the clock, and that is a little bit easier with four frags on the button. There we do have shield pop out. Nice rail coming out. Razy's going to kind of push the fight, and the shield runs out. Rafa doing a significant amount of damage, but Razy's still able to get away. Yeah, and after all that, Razy has position on the Mega, so he's okay with taking that initial damage, but he is going to try and fight for this Mega. No orb up for Rafa. The rail before he goes through the telly. Rafa will grab the light. Ooh. Nice rail as well, and he's muscled his way onto that Mega weed. He had to give up the Mega, but at least he got a rail uh, as he was departing that room. Nice orb by Rafa, again, for positioning, puts him there in a spot to be able to grab that heavy, but actually decides to push on Razy.
got some good damage in. He's got an opportunity to grab frag number two. There's a shotgun blast coming around the corner. All he needs to do on the chase. Wow. Oh, kind of caught on the call there. And the shield pops at the perfect time to save him once again. Razy still on the run. Yeah, still on the hunt is Rafa. He knows he's weak, but he finds him with the LG to get his second frag. And Razy hyper defensive on that one. Pop the shield, as you said, just to stay alive, but he didn't have resources to stack back up. Rafa knew it, took advantage of it. And now the shield is down 25 seconds. And Rafa on the hunt again. And there it is. LG out, catches him just a little bit off of that jump pad. He sees his opponent grab that heavy. And honestly, Razy kind of needed to disrupt that control coming out by Rafa. So Mega is going to be up here in just a moment. And I do think Ruff is handling this well. The shield is going to be back up for Razy here in just a moment. Orb is up. And let's see what happens. Now, Ruff is looking for opportunities to force Razy to pop that shield. So then he can go in and damage. Of course, that's going to negate some of the damage incoming from Rafa. A huge rail coming out. Immediately, we see the pop of the shield and Rafa down to nothing. The orb kind of misfired there, and Razy takes frag number six. Oh, no. He's going to go off the spawn as well. The rail doesn't land for Rafa at the last minute. Seven to two. Oh, just over six minutes. And oh, look, there's a mega weed. Right oh now. my god, and again, a rail in a shotgun, and Razy's running away with this. And, uh, you know, this is impressive, right? We are seeing Rafa with more damage. He's got about 2,700 damage to the 2,500 of Razy. Rafa right now shooting a 63% rail out of 19 shots, and both players with a, a 40 or above LG, uh, with, of course, Rafa with a ton more damage, but... Uh, very interesting, these two are really putting on quite a show, and they're hitting their shots. Absolutely, so much damage from both players, but Razy coming out a little better off. Six frag lead, seven minutes in, big buck shot up. Whoa, Rafa really wants this one. Razy closes the gap. Wow. Nine HP after the shield pop and engagement. Rafa trying to clap back, and he does in the Thunderdome and makes a quick frag back. And he needed that one if he's gonna try to bring this one back, right? He needs to stop that momentum of Razy. He was able to do so. He knows the shield's down, but not for long. It's going to be back up now. And that, uh, again, you can just see once Razy pops that shield, just how difficult it is to take out your opponent. Now, if you're looking to make back six frags, wow. that is going to be tough, especially if Razy is hitting defensive rockets like that one. You can't really chase. In fact, he's going to go in on it. Shield does pop out yet again. He hits another rocket, and although Razy is so low, there's not much that Rafa can do to chase. Yeah, couldn't really risk it, but that was pretty good damage here. Heavy will go yeah. to Rafa, and Razy trying to stack back up, and now it's a matter of time. Six frag deficit for Rafa. He's got to start making things happen, and Razy, if he just keeps the damage high and makes sure to prioritize the vials, he will have the shield for any kind of engagement. And right now, he has got to be on the hunt for Razy. Rocket jump up to that Mega. And just not able to find him. There oh! Huge. Razy trying to go for that teleporter to get back in, but that rail caused him to go completely off trajectory. And that was that's a solid way of just getting rid of that, that shield. Now shield wasn't popped. Here it is. LG coming out. Rafa gonna commit to this one on the chase. Great rail is stopped by a rocket. It doesn't hit, but it stops him. And there is a minute and 30 seconds left for Rafa to try to come back with five frags. At this point, that's looking like a pretty tall order. I don't know if that's possible. We've seen a lot of things happen, but this one is going to be one of the most difficult here. Razy's going to definitely stay away from that window after what just happened and just maintain this five frag lead. He wants to play defensive. He's going to have the shield back up, and this is all Rafa. He's got to aggress. He's got to play smart. He's got to do so much damage. And look at that defense from Razy. Just unbelievable on the rail. And one more, maybe. No, Rafa nice. gets the rail instead right before the Mega. Five to nine with a minute left to go. And just to put it in perspective, there's at least one more shield here. With Razy's movement, I think he's able to just play defensive at this point. Rafa's gonna do everything to try to track him down, but he may just have to be setting his sights onto the next game, which will be keep. Okay. <laughs> and a map that uh, has been claimed by both of these players. It's both as Rafa's keep and as Razy's keep. Absolutely, but I am very impressed with Razy here. Again, the picks were stronger as we looked at the pick ban phase and getting this comfort pick on map number one and playing to this level and resetting essentially to a best of five. Razy has to feel a little bit of relief. He's still got a ton of work left to do, but this is fantastic for Razy. There's one more frag, but to get 
three frags in 15 seconds. That just is not gonna happen. So Razy will take the first map. They receive the shield pop and what could be the final engagement as the clock and seconds tick away. Razy will tie the series up one to one. ZSX is back at the desk and we said how crucial that first map would be for Razy to kind of negate that advantage that Rafa has and he has done it. Now, let me ask you this because Rafa's a smart guy. He knows Razy on clutch is going to be tough to deal with. Do you think that that was maybe an outcome that he expected? Getting off to that start was incredibly important for Razy just to set the tempo, set the aggression, and show the confidence as well. Even within a minute, you're just, just getting the frag. And there were some elements of fortune to get there, but I think Rafa would have expected that, right? That's what a clutch brings. And the problem is, Clutch breaks the methodology of, of the duel, right? There's very little Rafa could have done in many situations to be able to combat that. And so we get the reset, baby. We go back and it's a square game, a square best of five. It's a beautiful way to start again. Sigh of relief, but still a ton of work on Razy's plate. But that does give him a little bit of cushion and it kind of even things out. And again, his pick phase was actually a lot stronger this time. As, as we look deeper and deeper, it's only going to get better for him as we take a look we, at the stats. We, we talk about the ability to play all the champions, play all the maps. You know, maybe Rafa can, should play clutch. <laughs> he had yeah. the first pick and he could have taken it away from him. He thought he could counter sure. it. We see the Ranger have worked in the past and it could have worked on this map, but the pressure was too much. The start was too strong. And to try and come back against your clutch is almost impossible. You have to set the tempo and the momentum. Yeah, that's right. And uh, of course, Razy was just doing the dance well enough to be able to keep out of sight of Rafa. And uh, six to nine, still pretty high scoring, all things considered. Yeah. But now we're going to be moving on to Corrupted Keep, where we're going to have Rafa on the Anarchy and Razy on the Strog. Really interesting. Um, Rafa again getting picking the Anarchy this time. And it's a champion where, again, you have to snowball. The Anarchy wants to be in front and he wants to set the tempo. It's incredibly strong if you can do that. You have the inject to boot, but at the same time, I like the Strog as a counter because it is a solid medium champion, good stack to his name, spawns with some armor, has the health files if he kills his opponent. So then he has that st snowball potential too. The peaker for the burst. I think that Razy can stabilize it. If he can slow that tempo and stop Rafa from getting ahead early, he's gonna be in a really good position on this map. If Rafa gets a strong start, then it becomes worrying. We've seen Rafa play, I think, twice against an Anarchy and Corrupted Keep. The game plan has always been keep away armor. I want to see Razy implement that same strategy, try and take all the armors off the map, let yeah. him have his mega health, let him have his inject, and just leave him armorless. And just shotgun damage is so yeah. big against an Anarchy with no armor. It is absolutely incredible. I mean, but when you think about denying someone armor, like Rafa is typically one of the best at that, right? Yeah. We've oh, seen yeah. him no start out. And all these, oh, yeah. it, is, it is no small task against someone who knows how to do that so well. Um, but again, like these two are here in the grand finals for a reason who they had to battle through how they approached and played each game some of them in overtime mm -hmm. some of them clawing comebacks they both deserve to be here so I, that's going to be that's definitely a tall order but it's possible you do get that frag you get an advantage it can happen we've seen the best players completely locked down and control map uh, versus other players all the time absolutely and Razy has the potential to do that against Rafa. Rafa has the potential to do that against Razy. It definitely comes down once again to that start. It's going to be critical. We are in a position now tied up. This next game is going to be crucial. Taking even a single game lead ZSX can help swing the momentum and it's not all about the momentum but there's a big opportunity here. I'm you know, Flea's not up here, but I'm sure he's got some stat about, like, you know, Razy's never been in the lead by more than one game in a, in a grand final series. So we'll have to see how this goes. Well, he's not in the lead yet either. No. As he has to fight through Rafa on Corrupted Keep. He's got him pinned in the corner to start with. He's down below. He's used the Pika, but Rafa's also got the inject in reserve if he needs it. And take this fight, knowing he has that resource available. Big Rocket just missing the head of Razy, but still doing enough chip damage. Yeah, and our major items are going to be very, very close to one another. They're going to swap it up. Actually, big LG damage. And Rafa has an opportunity for that first frag. Crazy, only eight points of health. Rafa knows he's just going to 
constrict Razy's movement, and Razy's gonna decide to go for it. He has to double back, and that's confidence from Rafa right there, saying, okay, I'm gonna let you live right oh. here. Huge, huge rocket coming out, but Rafa's still getting that first frag. He's up on the board. Amazing awareness from Rafa to understand that Razy was so weak he wouldn't commit for the heavy, and that gave Rafa the opportunity to take the map away. He's also got his prey locked once again. The inject's coming up in three. The, the mega is coming up in five. Rafa wants to delay. He wants to take it, and he wants to kill his opponent following all of the above. He's got Razy trapped there. Big rocket coming out. Nice. Razy has to push into the room, but nothing to work with. Rafa's going to strip this map away, and that worst-case scenario we talked about, it's happening for Razy. And you know what? Even grabbing that light on the way out through the red room as he was making his way over to the heavy. That was huge. You can see Razy has zero armor stack right now. Not great when you consider what Rafa has at his disposal, including another inject in about 10 seconds here. And now Rafa on the hunt. He definitely has the control right now. There's another mega picked up. And this is Razy now in a rough spot, doing everything to try to find himself a single light armor. There's a shotgun blast, Razy is wow. now on the run. Ra Rafa's got his target out. Yeah, but Razy did a lot of damage. He's also delaying his pickup massively. Look how much damage he's done. The heavy machine gun as well. And this is one of the things with the anarchy. If you get caught out in the open, you can get stripped with that heavy machine gun with the hit scan. It's about the trades. It's about the tempo. Rafa dropping down below. He doesn't want anything with that. He wants to push him for this mega. But Razy's got it as well. Rafa steals it, bounces away, in fact. And that is the second frag. I was nicely done by Rafa doing the dance, but keeping himself in a safety spot. What? He's gonna go in on it. Ooh. And that was risky, but you know, in these situations, you do have an advantage. He decided to go for it. That could have turned out worse, but it actually uh, put him up by another 3-0 lead with two minutes and 46 seconds on the clock. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Actually gets away from the peak and strips his life. I thought that was the right play, but Rafa is on another level to all of us, going the long way around. And now these aggressive pushes from Razy, they're appearing to become reckless very, very quickly. He's in the ropes and will give up a fifth frag within three minutes. I mean, that becomes danger zone, right? Uh, yes, this is a map where those uh, frag conversions can snowball, but not like this as Rafa continued to dish out the damage. Now very low this nice. time, and Razy is able to just Juke and dodge enough to stay alive, grab the Mega, and put his first frag on the board. But Rafa still with a solid four frag lead. But it all comes down to this next round of items. Rafa's yeah. had to forfeit this heavy, but he will want to contest this next Mega. As I say that, he moves into vicinity. Razy with the machine gun at the ready, stripping Rafa's health away. Drops down low, no peek there, but Rafa's gonna try and do what Razy did. He's got the buffer of five frags to play with, though. That is the difference here. He can be aggressive and chuck away a few frags to get that control back because we know how masterful he is when he has that dominance. I'm actually surprised. Oh, he is going to go for the red room. He knows the Rafa's Lovely there trying move. to get himself a light, and it pays off. He actually decides to go in through the hourglass hallway. And I can't even tell you how incredibly smart both these players are playing with their entryways. They're taking these unusual pathing and catching each other off guard. Constant game of chest and back and forth. But look at the dominance now. It's completely swapped. 15 seconds between the items. Razy can play aggressive. He can strip this health at distance and then use that leverage to consolidate the item advantage. And there's what Forty was talking about, except being done by Razy, going through that red room, mm -hmm. taking away that light. And you can see Rafa has no armor stack at all, which means that's a big clue for Razy, knowing like, well, I picked this one up. The other one is right over here. And if he can kind of guard it, if he can kind of deny Ooh. it, Big shotgun blast, but not a ton of damage. Rafa in that back corner. There's a big opportunity here for Razy to try he to bring this back. doesn't know the timing, we, and that is massive as he has to vacate. He knows it's up at some time now, but Razy's up to double back. He's going to catch him. Rafa's going to go the long way around, and he gets oh! caught with a heavy machine gun. And he gets the heavy, and he might be able to head on he over and grab the mega. mega. That is big, grabbing control of both the major items. You are absolutely right, and why knowing the timings is oh so important. You drop in there too early, and you are just a fish in a barrel, easy to be oh, able to take no out. He has no idea. None. Yeah. yeah, he has no idea when the timings are. 
And that is worrying. I've never seen Rafa this disorientated on a map before. And it's the pressure from Razy once again, forcing him away. He's pushed him away. 13 health. The heavy's up, but it won't go. Oh. The peak is there. It hits him in the face. He's got enough to survive. razy has got the mega, and razy has got the momentum. He's going to continue this push. No LG for Rafa. If Razy catches him out in the open, he could be in trouble, and he knows where he is. You can see the X-ray. He's pushing round. He knows he's going to push. Big oh, rocket at the second. What a big frag, also getting that light. Catches Rafa off the spawn, is gonna get him once what? again. again. Does it know the timing has to go through the teleporter and is taken out with that last tick of the lightning gun and suddenly we are tied. We talked about momentum and Razy has it in abundance. He's using the snowball on the strong, but big rocket coming out from Rafa on the defense. The Pika does some work. Razy still wants to push. He's got the weapon advantage, but not the stack. Rafa! Oh my gosh! The rocket came through. I think Rafa thought that rocket was going to connect this... and make something happen. It did not, though. Razy somehow stayed alive and got the frag, and for the first time, he's got the lead in this match. Yeah, and there was so much time before the, the heavy armor that Razy could push on in, and this is the problem. Rafa isn't doing any damage. He's just running away like a scared animal, and that means he's not doing anything to get himself onto these items to press them, and in some instances, even to get the timing. We've got three minutes left in this game. Still in a situation that anything can happen, but those light armors being gobbled up he by needs Razy, no, another Pika. big peeker kill. And then getting the heavy on top of that. Right now, Rafa just wondering how he is gonna knock down the defense that Razy has right now and but, frankly deal with his offense as well. And this this is the problem, but Big Rock is coming out. The third one doesn't he's hit. He's got to make it happen. This is the this is the most amount of work he's done in the last three or four minutes. He's actually stopped the momentum of Razy. Razy really can't pressure this heavy. Otherwise, that will happen. A rocket to the face. Rafa can't follow up. He doesn't have the weapons, but now he has an item. He can begin to build. Two minutes to go, two frags in it, but he needs to maintain this stack ahead of this next Mega. Razy's above, Razy's prowling with the rockets. Rafa's done a good job to steal it away and actually get away relatively cleanly. Now he can chase with this inject up in three seconds. And more importantly, Rafa knows what the timings are. Now there's yes. only less than two minutes left to go, so that's not going to be huge in two more cycles, but that frag is huge as he brings this deficit to just one frag with a minute 40 left on the clock. He knows what the timings are. He's sitting on top of that heavy. He even gets a chance to delay it just a little bit, knowing that he's going to be able to get it safely. And that allows him to have that heavier stack going into what could be a tying frag. He's going to grab the Mega 2, and he's got to make a move. Now, out of players here who are able to make a move, Rafa definitely one who knows how to make it happen. He gets some damage, but doesn't force it. Peeker is down, and that means another window of opportunity. Yeah, but the items have begun to converge. So if Razy can delay, there is something he can fall back on. Ra Rafa's even taking away the lights, as Rafa does. Razy going to have to try and now just hide his court between the rock and a hard place. He's moved out of position for this mega. So look at the stack of Rafa. It's going to be gigantic. Razy's going to have to play the minute of his life to take this map away. Otherwise, we will go to another time. And this is not a very big map. There's only so many places to hide. We're going to see Rafa. He's caught him from the back. He's down. No! Shotgun to the face! Both of them connect in a majestic way, and we are tied up. But now he's in a fantastic position. He's got the better stack. He knows the time. He's catching with the LG. He almost pulls it down. The inject comes out just in case. And 20 seconds left. Four, we're going to overtime. LG comes out. Pika! Oh! Pika is shot down for more importantly. Razy goes down. Rafa regains the lead. And with 10 seconds remaining, Rafa, did he just pull it out? And the answer is yes! Wow! Wow, indeed. Let the, let the cheers kind of tell the story. That is what makes a champion, right? Being down by several frags, having your opponent come back, tie it up, take the lead again, and then just to be able to claw it back. But not only that, in the last minute and 20 seconds. That was two Goliaths 
going head to head because they just wrestled control and map dominance away from one another, trying to show who is the alpha. We went from a 5-0 scoreline to what was a, I think it was 8-5, just yeah. perfection for yeah. both players in different ways. And it was Rafa who had that little bit of juice left in the tank at the end. That was an absolutely incredible map. This whole series has been incredible so far, right? The control going back and forth. Crazy coming so close to finally being in the lead in a grand final, but no, he is once again finding himself in a position where he's got to chase down Rafa, and this is the fight that determined it all. Crazy, he's still going to be visible. Yeah, he was still in plain sight. I don't know what he was going for there. Maybe he thought he was closer to the doorway and would no longer be visible, but no, Rafa held his ground. He stood tall, got himself a decisive frag. I mean, just happy that these games are as close as they are. Honestly, when Rafa was struggling with the timing, that looked pretty bad. But it does go to show you keep your cool, mm -hmm. you watch what your opponent does, right? Sometimes you're able to get information even when you don't have it. Like, so for example, he knew that those major items were separate enough. When he did finally get the heavy, he knew that he could kind of move yeah. over to the mega and, and, and he put himself in a position to be able to attack that. At that point, he grabbed control. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we spent we spoke about momentum, we spoke about the snowball effect of both champions, and then we saw it in abundance from Anarchy towards the end. And particularly on a map like Corrupted Keep, where there is no rail, sometimes you right. you just have to wait. There's always going to be that element of a messy fight. And it's the key when you're out of control is to maintain your composure, your positioning, not give up too many frags, and eventually your opportunity will come. And that's what Rafa did. He was clueless for a few minutes, but he didn't give up too many frags, and that kept him within yeah. you know, a controllable factor of a victory. One of the things that I find most remarkable about Rafa is how good he is at making those comebacks matter, right? Very often it's not even necessary because it's Rafa, right? Often he's the one in the driving seat. But I always get the impression when you're watching that a player can be, what, two, three, four frags in the lead with a minute or two left, and it still feels like Rafa is the one who's about to take yeah. it. And that is incredible. No other player in the league does that, I think. And again, Rafa mounted the comeback successfully so. What's really interesting now is we head into game number four. Rafa's mm. ahead 2-1 right now. But we go on to Ruins. Pretty big map. We're going to have Rafa playing on the Knicks, and we're going to have a Razy playing on the Scale Bearer. So the style of game that we just saw on Corrupted Keep is going to be so far from yeah. what we are about to see. What are your thoughts? Really interesting. Obviously, I don't think we saw a lot of these two champions together on this particular map. As I said, we saw this exact matchup on Molten earlier with uh, with Razy on the Knicks. And, mm. you know, Rafa was able to utilize the stack and speed to bully the Knicks. It's definitely harder to do that on Ruins just because of the geometry of the map, the way the items are laid out. Uh, Razy might want to make a play in and around the heavy armor, but then you can also just use the bull rush to, to kind of skirt through, steal away the Mega with a bit of a drive-by. I can't believe I'm not allowed to cast this one, guys. Um, this one, I honestly don't know what <laughs> It's going to play out. I was speaking to some of the pros. They said they didn't know it's going to play out. I'm pretty sure these guys on stage don't really know it's going to play out. It's going to be more of a, I'm going to evolve into the game. I'm going to see how it's playing. If I'm hitting my shots, I can be more aggressive. I think this one's going to be a bit more lucid, a little bit more flexible, and they're going to be more adaptive than, than more of a strategy. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of different scenarios here to potentially un that could unfold here. I do think Flea, Razy, he is a player that loves to set up those traps, mm -hmm. but Rafa's, uh, right, he is, uh, he's a, a, a tough little creature to trap, right? He's he tough to trick. He was nicknamed the professor for a reason, right? right? <laughs> his game awareness, his positioning is extremely good. And here we go, starting it off once again on Rafa's point of view. He's playing the Knicks, he's got that ghost walk, the wall jump, but he's small, doesn't have a lot of stack to work with. And we, you as our resident scale bearer fan, you would be very excited to watch Razy pick him at such a critical moment. I, I have to say, uh, no, I haven't changed my mind about scale too much, but the players that have utilized scale, hold on, we've got a fight down here in the lower heavy room. And that bull rush did come out, and that just hearing the footsteps is intimidating yeah. enough. And expect that if Rafa does hear that, he's going to immediately go into a defensive posture, try to stop his opponent. 
but that's also where that trapping from Razy comes in big, right? Mm -hmm. If you see the bull rush coming from a million miles away, you probably will be able to avoid, especially when you've got a ghost walk. It just doesn't, you know, in case. Um, yeah. But that's why Razy's probably going to sit, try to find a moment that he would be able to use it. <gasps> that's oh. risky. Both of these players taking a big risk. Rafa doing some good damage, taking a rocket wow. to the face. And he's going to buy Razy some precious time and freedom, but he's got to give up the mega in this exchange. And now Razy, despite being the tank, has got significantly less stack than Rafa. No doubt the American is looking to capitalize with this advantage. The first frag is going to be huge, too, right? Here's the situation, right? Rafa gets a frag, converts one, two, three. Razy trying to kind of outpace the Knicks in catching up. That is real, real tough to do. But if yep. you're the scale and you can get that first frag, maybe convert one or two, it's just as tough for the Knicks to, to bring that back. But mm -hmm. I would say that if Rafa can pick up an early lead here, which is not easy, but if it happens, uh, that becomes a more difficult game for Razy later on as the clock ticks away. Yeah. Now something else to consider, we were talking about setting traps with the scale bearer. The bull rush deals more damage the faster you're going. So if you get a trap close by and you run into him from pretty much point blank range, you're really not going to be doing all that much damage with the bull rush. So that's another element to consider here. Now Mega is about to spawn. Razy not sufficiently confident in his stack to stick around. Razy has got to make a run for it. Rafa's trying to chase him down. It's pretty rare when you see the oh. scale bearer running away with a huge rail a perfect rocket on the exit from the teleporter followed up by a ray oh, and rafa is up in the lead takes the first frag oh, crazy to secure the heavy this time around though rushing around the map getting himself critical weapons lg on lg who's gonna take it oh rafa overcoming the stack advantage taking down his opponent with the lg it's one of those moments, Flea. He's where early. Raze is too early. Two you, seconds too I, early. Mega you, doesn't spawn yet. I, I talk about the reason that I have a dislike for scale is because it could go really wrong and go really right. And this is a really wrong scenario mm -hmm. right here. This Nothing has really worked out. You think you're this big burly scale that can then just go in and bully the frags away. And we've seen players fall into that trap. Absolutely. And then what happens? Your opponent's up by four suddenly. Now he's gonna keep at good it. Read. And it's you know, it is good read. If if it works out, wow, what a rail defensively. And I think Razy's just looking for a frag, stop the momentum, maybe convert one or two. But you just cannot let Lick the Rafa have too many freebies like that. Mm -hmm. Speaking of freebies, completely whiffing the bull rush, giving your opponent a hell of a lot of opportunities to do damage. That is just serving it up on a silver platter. And now Razy already down by five frags. We're not even at the halfway point of this map. Yeah, this is already boating well for Rafa now. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of time left, but this is one of those scenarios that when we were looking at the picks and bands and looking at the map, I was thinking about it, and this is kind of my biggest worry for Razy. Yeah. Uh, you do not want to be in a position where, you know, Rafa can just kind of run away with it. Because I'll tell you what, as good as he is at coming back and as good even as Razy is with this particular setup with the champions and on the map, it's going to be tough. And another frag and Rafa. Speaking some words of encouragement to himself right there. See him mouthing, come on, come on. That's and exactly, another one. Yeah, and another one. Eight to zero. Wheat, I can't help but wonder. Whether that pretty devastating loss on the previous map oh. did something to Razy's mental state. He seemed devastated after losing the previous map because he came so close and now Rafa is absolutely steamrolling him. And maybe, maybe one of the reasons was because he was not confident about the map and the picks right here. I mean, halfway yeah. through 10 to zero, this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I struggle with Scale Bearer. Now, Razy does bring it back. Cheer. Cheer. Definitely, he needs it. The problem is, it's like to do that nine more times. <laughs> a Not really, a... really tough. Uh, his track record with the bull rushes. 
Not exactly ideal either. We I'm concerned we so little use out of it. That that Raze is just not playing his game. Mm. Right? Is relying maybe a little bit too much on the bull rush and and Rafa's playing around the bull rush, right? I'm yeah. going to dodge you. I'm then I'm going to LG you in the back. If I need to, I can ghost walk, then I can surprise you. How does, you know, Raze approach this? Yeah. He, I mean, I think another important thing to consider is, of course, control of the hourglasses, right? You want to deny them as much as possible when you're up against Nyx because she's so dependent on her ability. But what are you going to do when you're scale? Are you just going to keep rushing around the map just to deny them? No, that doesn't oh. work. And that engagement doesn't work either. Rafa was caught out in a very, very hard place, but still retaliates. Now, we did see something that I think is, needs to be a staple if uh, the last three minutes and 30 seconds will be miracle. And that is, you know, opening up at those rails and then going in. If your opponent has Ghost Walk, yep, they might get away. But, uh, right, that was, I think, the first really clean rail hit that we've seen come out of Razy. Yeah. And I wish that he would rely a little bit more on his fundamentals because I'll tell you what, the ability of scale is not really working out for him right now. Indeed, it is not. Oh, that's juicy, though. Point blank being propelled into Rafa by the rocket behind him. But wait, can this even be done? Eight tracks in three minutes. Keep in mind, you're up against the Knicks. So first, you've got to break the Ghost Walk and yep. then find your opponent again. And I don't know if that's in the cards for Razy at this stage. Oh, good attempt. If you can land this shot. Oh, Razy so hesitant, darting his own aim. Yeah. Wanted to line that one up perfectly, but in doing so, he lost a lot of stack and didn't even get off the kill shot. Yeah, he didn't. His look on his face was one of uh, disappointment as well. Now does manage to do a little bit of damage there, but not enough. Rafa is going to be able to get away, and like Rafa's confidence level in his aim, in, in the engagement that he's choosing to take, it is incredibly solid. And we, we mentioned it before, Rafa is hungry. He is uh, looking for that championship again, and he is mm -hmm. playing at uh, beyond even championship level. He most certainly is, and I think with two minutes left on the board and a 10 frag deficit, we can safely call GG on this map. Also, this is just really not a scoreline that you'd expect in a grand finals. Wait, 13 I, frags? You know, this is also one of those situations, right, where Rafa let that clutch through uh, in yep. that first game, right? Knowing very well, like, that's going to be a tough matchup for me. And, you know, it did set up a situation where if... if if scale was going to come out right in what map, how would that work? What This was probably a situation that Rafa was going to be pretty happy with. Yeah. Uh, he, he had a game plan for dealing with the scale 15 to 3. You're right, considering that we had a 6 to 9 score where Razy won, an 8 to 7 that Rafa won. This is a little bit more akin to what we saw this morning when Rafa defeated Razy 11 to 3, 6 to 2, 5 to 1. This is that championship dominance. It most certainly is, and that does mean that Rafa will be on match point, on championship point after this map. Yeah, one minute left to go. At this point in time, there is mathematically no chance that Razy could bring this back. He's yeah. got to be putting his eyes on Awoken, where he will be playing the Visor, and Rafa will be playing on the BJ. That is a whole different beast, much smaller map. Perfectly balanced champions, at least as far as stack goes. Visor, slightly higher mobility. He's got the piercing sight, able to look through walls at times. But then you've got the BJ. Rafa has got that burst damage to work with. And I think that at this point, Razy is hopefully already thinking about what he can do differently in the next map. But Weed, I'm slightly worried about his mental state. Watching his face on cam after losing that previous map, he already seemed quite devastated. Well, you know, to be a champion, you have to be able to erase that last game and move forward. And Rafa does set himself up for game point. 17 to 4 is pretty incredible of a score for him, but again, you know, that was a little bit more of the matchup. Ketchup joining us here on the stage. Your thoughts on that one? 
watching that in the crowd. Uh, the energy's pretty electric. Shouts to this crowd for another time. Wonderful QuakeCon so far, and it's wild to think that we might be almost over. But watching this match, it was a masterclass on how to handle Scale Bearer in the right situation, even in moments when Rafa had straight up nothing to survive a bull rush, just basic movement, backwards mm. movement, letting it miss, calling out Razy in those situations, and then on top of that, keeping them behind, never missing a shot, picking up the right items, and the aggressive ghost walk, feeling himself so much that those surprise attacks, there was an instance up top right above here where the ghost walk right behind one super shotgun. I mean, yeah. you're not used to seeing a scale bearer player get <laughs> handled like that. Yeah, I mean, let me just throw out a hypothetical plea to you. If we saw this game played 10 times, how many times do you think we get results like this? You mean Rafa versus Razy with D space yes, on that map? Yes. Oh, I feel eight out of ten. Yeah. Easily. For yeah. Rafa. Might even go nine. That's a, it's tough. I just I think it is is so tough. Um, and uh, th that was kind of a perfect mid of the pack map pick and champion pick mm. that came out for Rafa, considering that again he maybe knew that that clutch match had a good chance of going Razy's way. And Razy now has to win every single map from this point to steal away that championship from Rafa. I got to imagine that means Rafa can literally smell it. He can see it. It's almost blinding him. The light's coming off it. Mm -hmm. He, It is so close. He's got one hand on it. I mean, this one must mean a lot to him. It's been two years since he's gotten secure the belt. And if we look at the overall winnings as far as the Quake Championship League goes, right, we can look back and we can see that Rafa is currently at four belts, kills and trailing behind him at three. So if Rafa can win this one, he will no doubt secure himself a spot as the GOAT of the Quake Champions Pro League era. It's it takes just a, five, huh? It takes five as it the takes five, officially? It takes five. Yeah, That's okay. it. Just I mean, we're working on it. We're yeah. working on it. <laughs> we're well underway. Well underway. Um, what I'm loving about this so much, though, is the story. Uh, the biggest story going from Razy's side, though, is that one fantastic start in this series. Mm -hmm. From that point on, it's starting to look a little bit more like what history has taught us. Yeah. And that is where the concerns lie. Is he going to be able to even if there is some kind of barrier there, this is where you have to conquer it because yeah. we're at the finals. This is the finals finals. There's no reruns here. Uh, and Razy's had to work so hard to reach this point. It would be a perfect full circle moment if he could pull this off. But even yeah. getting a map, he, as he said many times, one map at a time. We have to just concentrate yeah. on each 10 minutes mm -hmm. and that's all there is to it. But uh, you, you know, we can run through all the scenarios. The one thing you have to consider is that Rafa has been here before. He's yeah. been down before he's clawed back he's won being in the lead puts him in a very comfortable spot which means again going back to Razy in order for him to avoid the second place curse he has to win the next three games statistically how many times has that even happened versus Rafa right like this would be not only incredible undertaking but it would be uh, right just statistically something that we have never really even seen yeah. before but to absolutely. do the unthinkable the world finals is the place to it pull it absolutely off. Is it absolutely yeah, right. is. Now, before we move on, just talking about the figure suite. They've played each other 11 times in the history of the Quake Pro League. Rafa has won nine out of those. And also worth noting is that Razy has been in a grand finals six times throughout the Quake Pro League. Three of those were against this very man, Liquid Rafa, and he has yet to win a single one in that situation. But now he's got to go big or he has to go home. I mean, uh, it, it's a tough spot to be in, right? For Rafa fans, they're... They're ready, they are, they're like, this is done, next game. Rafa's gonna have that belt once again. I know for the Razy fans, they are just saying, this is the time to, to pull out that Miracle Razy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you've you shown us a, a different kind of Razy here at QuakeCon, one that, you know, is a little bit more flexible, seems to be confident in himself, mm -hmm. would hate to see him kind of in a position where at the finals, it, 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 you know, he worked so hard to get here and then it kind of falls apart again. Now, let me just say, also, amongst the, the all of the competitors that we've had in the QPL, second place is still really damn good. It is. It is. It is. But when you've just been after that championship for so long, I, I hope he can do it, and I know he's still got it in him. Right? Yeah. This, it would be a miracle, yes, but it would not be one that we haven't seen before. ESL 2018, where Razy earned himself the nickname the God Slayer, right? Rafa, untouchable, hadn't lost a map 
that entire tournament. True. He's up in the upper bracket. Razy coming down from the lower one. Double best of five. Razy clears it and wins. So this is absolutely still possible. He's got to channel the vibes He's from back then and vibes, make it man. happen. And I do think that, you know, Razy is the tough spot is that he's up against two people, Rafa and himself in that regard, right? If he can just overcome himself and just deal with Rafa, I think maybe that miracle could happen. But right now, Rafa is in a great spot to potentially secure his fifth championship. I, I would go as far to say more than that uh, in regards to how many people Razy has to conquer. <laughs> this crowd, I would go as far to say, is another extra dynamic. We talked to Rafa True. earlier today. Rafa was able to say that this energy, the people, the fact that he is the hometown hero, yeah. uh, it's something that is fueling him. It is giving him that extra motivation. It doesn't feel good to be on a stage with a crowd of people that, look, they'll love Razy to bits, but they have a clear favorite here. Mm -hmm. And conquering that is an extra dynamic entirely. And I do believe there has been a little bit of waiting here in between yep, matches. But they're about ready to jump back in. Has so. to be done. I mean, if a player needs some time to get themselves together, this is potentially a final opportunity. So if you're going to have to take time, by all means, do it. Yeah, Ooh. shout out to Lethal in the background. Wow. Here we go. The Razy fan club make some noise. There they are. There they are, the Maestro boys. Flea, uh, before you uh, exit here, we are on Awoken. It's, Lick, uh, it's Rafa with the BJ and Razy with the Visor. Any mm -hmm. thoughts on this particular matchup before? A Visor on Awoken is a bit of a contentious issue. I know that there's players who really are like, oh man, I love picking him on this map and it's worked really well for me in the past, but that definitely doesn't always work. It's a relatively small map, so that piercing sight is going to make noise. Your opponent is going to hear you pop it more often than not, plus relatively small map, so you should always have a decent idea of where your opponent is at. So I think that the BJ, with that burst damage, especially with Rafa's general awareness, yeah. his ability to pop that on time before the fight starts, this one is favoring Rafa. Well, for Razi, the Bucks got to stop here. He needs to win the next three matchups. Every single one is one step closer. But that is a tall, tall order when you've got a four-time champion in Rafa. And it is amazing still throughout his career that he is just devastating as he is and as dominant as he is. And here we go. <clears throat> what could be the final map in our Quake World Championships? Quake God, make some noise! Checking things out from Rafa's point of view first. We're going to find out who's going to score this first blood and the motivation to continue in this 10 minutes. Rafa, a decent selection of weapons, has basically everything he could want at this point. But now the game is setting up that first fight. Razy, the piercing sight, ready to rock. Hasn't used it yet, though. And I feel like there's a reason for that. Is it going to help the fight later on? In this position now, knowing the advance could happen. Oh no, a little bit of self-damage on the pillar. That is not what you wanted, as Rafa is going to get the first frag here in what could be weeks, our final match. It could be, and oh, no. Rafa is going to get that second frag. And yeah, you, you mentioned that he didn't pop that piercing sight right away, something that sometimes we'd see right out of the gate, right off of the spawn. It didn't happen, not sure why Razy decided to do that, but Rafa just decided to get a aggressive early knowing that getting that first frag uh, can be crucial right to the momentum of this matchup to then follow it up with a conversion frag that's a hell of a way for Rafa to start in what could be the championship game and Razy yeah gotta say a lot of patience but almost hiding in the start of this matchup I sp spent a good 15 20 seconds in that LG room not even moving just desperately listening to where his opponent could be because I'm gonna be honest with you I think he does not want to have to spend that piercing sight unless he needs to in this instance he will pop it but he's early 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 you can see just how important this item's gonna be for him yeah, I'm really curious what Rafa's gonna do. Immediately popping that dual wield over near the Mega. LG comes out. Rafa actually taking a fair amount of damage while Razy's able to pick up that Mega. But he zoned him. He kind of knows exactly where he's at. And Razy oh! down is caught by the LG hanging in the air catch up. Rafa was low, but he got himself the heavy. 
and already three frags up two minutes in. That's the kind of fight that you feel in your bones. Razy takes a unorthodox angle towards Mega there for that fight. Does catch Rafa off guard, but a defensive rocket's enough to force it away and just disengage the entire thing. This next major item, Razy looking for it, and Rafa kind of doing what he's done all day long is if it's not worth the risk, it's not worth the risk. He's going to back off there, prioritize that heavy, has been able to take it away from Razy now, and has been able to escape with his life, maintaining a solid lead as now, Razy, we have to go for a new plan. There's still no rocket launcher in hand, mind you. Yeah, I mean, Rafa is scary as, as you know, just any time you're playing against him, but a comfortable Rafa, that's even more scary. And uh, right now, I feel like Rafa's got the game position. He had that game to start off. He got the first initial frags, and this is the best possible scenario for Rafa to clinch this championship. But in doing all of this, Razy has been able to secure himself the heavy and is looking extremely chunky for this next fight. Pushing forwards towards the health now. Rafa forced on retreat, and Razy using this opportunity to know that Rafa is not going to be around for this mega health. In this instance, we're going to take that light. We're going to shut that away. Rafa left with basically nothing. And in this position, Razy opening rail, Ooh. but the return rail from Rafa. Rafa's still not healthy, and he's still going to have to give up this main area of Awoken. He does. He also had to give up heavy, and this is the first time that Razy's kind of been in position. Now he's going to slow play it as we've seen him do before, but it is Rafa who seems to have his own piercing sight and perfect rocket doing some damage. Wasn't enough to completely negate that stack from Razy, but it did stop him from attacking. So four minutes into this matchup, six minutes left to go. Rafa still with a three frag lead. Worth pointing out that in terms of light armor, Rafa has actually had very, very few of them. I think it goes to show what areas of the map have been more important, or in general, just controlled from Rafa. Some opening damage here as well. Razy using this chance to push forward. It's going to be health in three seconds. Once more, Razy pretty comfortable. He does the right thing. He knows that item is his for the taking. So in doing that, let's push forward, get some damage, and then we take the item. Let's just make that divide even bigger. Rafa wow. should by all means be a done deal, and he will be. Razy secures a frag here, still behind, but this is a momentum shift, Wheat. It is, and I, I think that the general strategy that Razy used in the last minute and a half, right, try to hit those rails, then go in for the attack. It's working out, but the dual wield LG comes out. Nice dance by Razy around the column, so he'll immediately pop that sight. It sets him up, hit, try to hit those rockets, cannot finish him off with the rail. Oh. oh, takes some massive damage there. Has to be careful grabbing that mega, but Razy's brought this back and is just now down by one. A very scary fight near TP entrance, I have to say. Either player could have gone oh. down there. And this time it's going to be the two-piece combo. Brazy stays alive here. We said earlier on, you know, there's nothing left but to win every single map. An almost impossible feat in these conditions for a lot of players. But Razy fighting tooth and nail to stay in this tournament. Oh. 100 damage as well. What a start. But Rafa pushes forward. Razy almost out of armor, swiftly undone by this light. Now, Heavy, our next challenge. Oh, wow. Anticipating that Razy was going to come from that window. Piercing sight. The rail almost hitting. He just needs to come oh. up. And there it is. A beautiful rail as Rafa comes up the stairs. Now Razy finally takes the lead. And he has a chance to extend that lead catch up. But do not ever count Rafa out. Just don't do it. You'll have a bad time. All of those small decisions made at a moment's notice. Rafa, the clutch factor has been unreal this entire weekend. And he's only one frag behind. Razy, in a better situation, has a lot more stack and has controlled this huge section towards Mega near the rail almost as well. A direct oh. rocket to start. And actually defensive rockets from Rafa, even better. Razy would have been in a horrible situation there, but Rafa choosing to back off. Razy's piercing sight, allowing that defense to be much safer. Ooh. But oh, 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 that rail so close yet so far. I mean, playing with 
with fire, but knew that he could touch it and maybe get a little burned because that Mega was still there right behind him. But just to show the level of risk that these are, two are willing to make to try to inch any sort of lead that they can. Huge El Wow, Rafa's on top, and he ties it back up. That guy's a torso went spinning right there. But from this position, four uh -oh. frags each. That nail gun did more than enough damage to force Rafa backwards. Two and a half minutes left to go. The dual wield looks like it has in fact been popped. The defensive rail as well. Razy pushes forward, answers back with the piercing sight. I see you, my friend, and I know that a safe rocket jump up towards this health is more than enough for me. Now, just over two minutes on the clock. A lot lies in the balance here, Wheat. I don't even want to think about what's going through these players' heads. I mean, you know, both taking very calculated moves. Rafa with some big tri -bolt damage. That's going to force Razy to rethink how he's going to attack that heavy. And that puts Rafa in a position to be able to do so. Now, he does take a little bit of damage, but he grabs that heavy. His stack's looking good. Razy with just a shard of armor. Not a whole lot coming out there. And we do have dual wield up. So, Razy wants to maintain that stack. Rail exchange. And at this point, too, Rafa has had to be really careful all map long, only taking two of the Mega and then Razy, it's 13. And wow. from that position, you know, I know BJ has access to a little bit of health regeneration, but if you're getting constantly peppered down by rails, that ain't going to mean all that much. A minute and a half left on the clock. At the rate this is going, could engage a sudden death. The dual wield on the tribal. Oh, good Ooh. lord. Razy, 95 HP pretty much negating that Mega. And at, at that point, I think he's okay with that. As long as he's holding onto that Heavy and he is uh, holding onto his dual wield for that burst damage, a minute left to go. We're tied four to four. Rafa could walk away with the championship belt with a win on this game. And so expect these two to play patiently. Rafa's got a little bit extra room for error but he does not want to give up this game to Razy. He's certainly setting himself up for a victory with 45 seconds in control of this heavy. However, the opening rail, Razy engages, doesn't capitalize, uses this just to keep information, a fair idea of where Rafa's going to be still. 30 seconds on the clock. I would be surprised if this doesn't go to a sudden death and how fitting it would be. Rafa potentially winning this tournament. Razy keeping himself alive. There is so much weighing on this. The dual wield is real. Oh Rafa juggles God. Razy to secure a frag and wait. Is that going to be enough? It, I, I think it is. He held on, but Razy still going after him. Rafa's going to chase, and Rafa gets out a gutter. players would have popped that the moment that they saw Razy. Rafa didn't. He waited. He felt that, what, that Razy was going to come out and show himself. And the moment he did, that dual wheel hold up in the air. Rafa absolutely deserved that. Ladies and gentlemen, your QuakeCon 2023 Quake World Champions, it's Rafa! Long year, so much work put into the improvement, the grinding, a man unsatisfied with the last two years, and this is where things come full circle. A worthy champion, a world-class representation of Quake. It's Rafa, ladies and gentlemen. What a way to win it as well. It's been so dominant for the entire course in the Pro League, the weekend. And he's got one of the strongest work efforts in the game. He couldn't be more deserving if he tried. But what a way to end that grand final. I mean, he literally sent Razy to space <laughs> with that dual wield LG. There is no better scenario where you he the moment he saw Razy jump, I guarantee you he knew. I just won this championship, right? He popped that dual wield. I just have to commend the discipline that Rafa had truly a champion.
You wonder where we go from here. The future's certainly bright. I know that it's been a long year. So many Quake players from around the world. The challenges, the major event here to finish things off. And I do believe we have the champion on stage with us, Rafa, mate. Congratulations. Let's get the generic questions out the way first. Okay, sure. How do you <laughs> first, feel? First, can we give a round of applause to Razy? Absolutely. For what he had to do to come to the finals. And, yeah, and seriously, really, really well played on the first map. I had no answer to, to the clutch on that map. So. That was going to be one of our questions for sure, right? We went into it. We talked a little bit about the picks and bans. And, uh, you know, we, we speculated, oh, it could have just been like Rafa thinking, I, I might just have to give this map up, but that's how you felt going into that one? Yeah, they kind of, they, they changed it, uh, so the winner's bracket advantage didn't get to ban first for a champ, and so it was up, and uh, I just felt there were a couple options, but I could have been baited into other picks, so I just tried to make it work, but he played phenomenally on the first map, and um, really weren't any flaws in his game at all. Yeah, well and done. How did you feel in that final moment? So, of course, on Awoken, you had stacked this advantage, uh, did a high advantage, all in the slightest, but with that dual ward in hand, did you know for certain that this is going to be the game-winning flag? Uh, I knew it was going to be for one of us right there. Uh, <laughs> I, I wasn't hitting very well on that last map, but I knew, like, if I just keep it close enough after the comeback, then, you know, I have the opportunity to trap him potentially one time, and that's all it's going to take. And it, You held on to that dual wheel for that reason. Yes. Right, you yeah. you felt like Razy was going to jump from that window. Yeah. Based off of how the previous rotation went, I figured that he would go to top T, and then he had sight, so then he would like establish position on heavy. And I felt like fighting him on the heavy would be too risky. I take one bad rocket, I get bounced off the map, or I just don't deal any damage, and he rocket jumps and chases me for the kill. So I figured just holding position, like trying to cut off for the next mega, was best. And it ended up working out. And um, just serendipitously, I, I meant to go to Cubby, but I fell. And so I figured, okay, now's the right. time he's going to try to go over me. And so I faked sound, went back, and that's all she wrote. So it's been a long year. You know, there's been a lot of practice, the ups and downs of uh, the online shows and the performance that you've had throughout the course of that all led to where we are today, the land, the crowd, QuakeCon's big return. It's almost a perfect story that you were able to take the first place. You know, being the crowd favorite, you have such a legacy with this event throughout the countless years. But in this exact moment, you're now the reigning champion. I know you said that you were hungry, you were looking to hit the stride, you know, you were unsatisfied with the last few years. Yeah. What's Good. running through your head right now, being at the top of the Quake world? I'm just thankful we were able to to play here again. It's been way too long. I really appreciate everybody like cheering in the crowd and playing in front of a huge crowd. It's really exciting to play, regardless of who you're cheering for. I've always wanted to play in big stage matches like that, and to be able to do it at QuakeCon again is very, very special. And um, I think just winning QuakeCon in general, the first target I went for was 0-4, who had three titles. Oh, and was wow. <laughs> Called out, John and then, Hill. Uh, and then there was a race between Cypher and I, and now yeah. the whole race with QPL between, you know, Kilson and myself and, and Wenger, and that's just pushing me to try to take my limits even higher. And I'm just really thankful for, you know, the scene that we have and the players to play against. It's, it's really, really special, and there's nothing like it. Well said, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we actually got a chance to talk with you several times during the featured matches of the QPL that, that were taking place weekly. And even you said, you know, the talent pool that we've got now is is exceptional, even compared to what we've had a little bit ago. And I don't think you ever said, I'm worried, Wheat, but you, you, you acknowledge that, right? Oh, yeah. Like, there's a lot of leveling up. No, you know, I, where do you think things go from here, right? You said that this motivates you to get, get better. Like, do you see a lot of the competitors that you faced here this weekend, like, stepping their games up as well? Oh, yeah, they're going to be tired of losing. It's just, <laughs> it's, they are going to be hungry, and there will be another target on my back again. Again, and I'll have to like really be diligent and prepare properly and yeah it's gonna be pretty tough but you know um, I'd rather be in this position than you know losing out so it's worth it you like that position <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right there you go there you go uh, Rafa is there anything you want to say I mean you, you did already thank the community a lot of the players but is there anything you want to say anyone you want to thank 
this is your time. Just like I said before, thank you all for being here today and being able to be a part of this together. Um, as well as my, my wonderful girlfriend who's been here cheering me on and helping me and supporting me. I love her so much. Um, and all my friends and family at home, I miss you. And uh, just thanks to Team Liquid and, and Alienware for providing all of the equipment that we use this weekend, PCs, monitors, all that jazz. So um, nothing else, sweet. I just appreciate you guys, and thank you so much. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause. Five Quake Champion belts. I don't know what you do with all those, Rob, but congratulations. <laughs> Collect them all. And uh, again, congratulations! Yeah, great, Thanks, guys. great job. Yeah, we're uh, you're you're good. You're good. Go celebrate, buddy. Well, what a year it's been! I cannot understate enough the absolute joy of being back here. It felt like we'd never be back, and just seeing so many familiar faces, old friends, new friends. You can't it's really nice. ask for it's, a more perfect case. It is difficult, isn't it? And even after four years, it's nice to see the community again, everyone back here on the stage as well. And it's nothing short of spectacular, yeah. it, from what we've witnessed today. I mean, it, I also just have to say, the, the players this year, right, the storylines were phenomenal. It, we had upsets, heartbreaks, incredible performances, things that we right, weren't even expecting to see. And uh, just another great year. It wasn't just this QuakeCon. It was the 18 weeks of QPL and the players putting all the practice and the dedication into those, entertaining us each and every week just to finally culminate in what was amazing here. There were so many great, uh, so many great matches that we got to see. Uh, and uh, I too, just like you all, very thankful to be here at another QuakeCon. Let's give a big round of applause to Quake, to Bethesda, to all the folks that helped with the production crew, to you who came out each and every matchup to all the players who showed up. Want to give a shout out to the casters, all the production crew and back. We thank each and every one of you. And uh, again, one big final congratulations to Rafa, the five time champion. And he's right. He's got another target on your back. So players, we want to see you uh, shoot for that target again next year so <laughs> thank you all so much enjoy the rest of your time here at quake con 2023 this is a wrap to the quake world championships again on behalf of all the casters and the production crew thank you so much for tuning in online or watching here in person we can't wait to come back we'll see you again next year we're out of here peace